Lord forgive me for this trap shit. Sergeant Smack make it backflip. Tell Telly Hanker with the action. With, with the Bible speaking Spanish. Frank Matthews, how I vanish. Came back like I'm King Tut. Gold BBS is on a beamer. When Fat Cat was 10 queens up. Go haul off the profit, not the re up. Blah, blah, like Puerto Rican Jesus. Up, uptown like I'm Baby Mane, just caught a touchdown. I don't go to jail for nothing. You hear me? I'm a real live gangster. Facts about me. Real live one. Live wire. Don't go to jail. None of that shit. Rob and Cammie, the Cincinnati Police Department takes a different approach when it comes to crime prevention. They target specific neighborhoods like this one, OTR, as well as the West End. Now, dozens of police officers from Cincinnati's police department hit the streets, handing out flyers, handing out specifics on what the department is focusing on, including removing drugs and illegal possession of firearms and information on unsolved homicides and armed robberies. Rob, this is Julius White isn't going anywhere anytime soon. As you mentioned, he's here in the Justice Center, and that meant that he was pretty easy to find when prosecutors dropped yet another charge on him late this afternoon. This time it's kidnapping. He was already being held on aggravated murder. Police aren't talking a whole lot about this case at this point, probably because they are waiting for it to go to a grand jury later this week. While most people know this community as Hawaiian Terrace, since his death, the tiny area where Dwayne Lewis lived has been dubbed Wayne's World. The signs of shrine are everywhere, as is the spray paint. Many of those who knew and liked the boy, known as Lil Wayne, even sport shirts and sweatshirts memorializing him. He was cool. He just was chilling. Like. He'd just be chilling. Like. You see him, he'd shake your hand. He was just he yeah, cool with everybody. Like. He'd be cool with you right now if he was right here. If he was right here. Like. When you heard what happened to him, what went through your mind? It was just Saudi, like, I couldn't believe it. Like, he was so little, like, I just couldn't believe it. Like. Lewis was shot and killed last Wednesday night at Blaine and Knox Streets in South Fairmount. While police still aren't talking about motivation, they've arrested 24-year-old Julius White, charging him with aggravated murder in the case. White has a long criminal history, including a prison stint in 2009 for trafficking in heroin. We were in court in 2008 when he showed up charged with felonious assault for allegedly shooting a man in the stomach. While that case was dismissed, he also had 29 other charges waiting in the wings. What's not clear yet is what his connection was to Dwayne Lewis and what could possibly explain the murder of a 14-year-old boy. Is anybody, the cops, the prosecutors, anybody on any level ever going to be able to explain it so that it makes sense to you guys in this community? Nah, it, it don't make sense. For somebody to be so young to just die like that, it don't make sense. And indeed, it doesn't make sense. There are a lot of really bizarre stories circulating within the community about what may have happened to Dwayne Lewis. And the police are clearly trying to sort through all of those right now. But the truth at this point is not clear at all. The one fact that does remain that is clear is that uh, Julius White is behind bars right now. At the Justice Center, Rich Jaffe, Local 12 News. Rob, Cammy. And Rich, one thing I haven't been able to figure out either is why was 14-year-old Lewis in South Fairmount to begin with? That's a long way from, the, from Hawaiian Terrace. Well, I suspect that that probably speaks to the kidnapping charge that they dropped on uh, Julius late today and hopefully we will get more of an explanatory uh, look at exactly what was going on as this case progresses and once it gets through that grand jury the other possibility is that there are other people out there still well they have rich thanks very much they have told us that there could be more arrests in this case as they try to sort through exactly what happened it is a little foggy right now if you have any information that may help police with this police case tonight back in the business of targeting select gang members they suspect of committing violent crimes. The evidence is a roundup police say put a big den in a gang that terrorized the West End and over the Rhine. Nine on your side reporter Tom McKee rode along for the roundup. He's live now with how this went down. Tom. Well, this is all due to Cincinnati's 11 homicides in January, but this was not some random roundup. It was a targeted enforcement based on computer driven data that basically went after selected criminals. Now, the gang that was busted today was based here on Lockhurst Lane near I-75 and Liberty Street. And the message from police is, if you commit violent crimes, they're going to come after you. 
Just after 9 Thursday morning, SWAT teams surrounded a West End building on York Street. Moments later, the first suspect of the day emerged in handcuffs. We're back. The Cincinnati Initiative to Reduce Violence is back in business as of today. Within the hour, the focus shifted to a townhouse a few blocks away. Here on Benton Street in the West End, the SWAT team used a battering ram to break open this door. You can see the force that was needed to break it open. The door was blocked by a piece of two by four. Nonetheless, suspect number two was nabbed. If you persist, this is the result. We're going to come, we're going to do our job, and we're not going to come with tickets and misdemeanors. We're going to build a good criminal case and we're going to come and make it stick. This all began with Julius White's arrest for killing Dwayne Lamar Lewis last fall. The trail then led to a very boastful Sham Sudden Pickens arrested by Sharonville police. I don't go to jail for nothing. You hear me? I'm a real live gangster. The trail led to many others, some in custody, some being sought. It was all tracked by computer to the West End, matching calls for shots fired and drug sales with persons shot and suspects detained. You don't need a PhD in problem solving to figure out exactly where our problem is, exactly who our perpetrators are. Thursday is the first public rollout of the new serve, and it's been called a total success. It's really crippled a significant group that had a stranglehold on the West End and even parts of over to Ryan and beyond. But the effort won't be the last to keep violent crime under control in the city. We're not waiting on a summer spike. We're starting now. To eradicate those networks. Of course, serve began about 10 years ago and it lowered the crime rate significantly. But when the budgets were cut, serve funding was cut also and the crime rate went back up. Now, serve is back. There are more police officers to be hired. A gang unit started to keep the streets safer. Tom McKee, not on your side. Evening, live everyone. A end. top gang member had bragged that he would never go to jail because no one would testify against him. But that was before he was targeted in a four-month investigation that started with the murder of a 14-year-old South Fairmount teenager. The bust in that murder led to more arrests that continued today. Local 12's Deborah Dixon was with police as the SWAT team moved through the West End. Robin Cammy, Cincinnati's initiative to reduce violence has always had a message to gangs. When a body falls, when there's a murder and it's linked to your gang, we will hunt you down. And that's exactly what happened. Cincinnati SWAT moved in and brought alleged gang members out of West End homes and whatever tools of the trade were found inside, such as this Glock with something SWAT team members don't see very often. Have you ever seen The Matrix? Yeah. When it's, they're essentially this firearm in The Matrix who's into the movie screenplay and they've got these enormous magazines hanging out of the bottom of them. Alleged members of a violent gang that police say was a lot about guns, to shoot, rob, deal drugs, and to murder. The West End gang was targeted after the murder of 14-year-old Dwayne Lewis in South Fairmount last October. Julius White, considered one of the network's top thugs, is charged in the killing. It took four more months to take out the rest of the gang's first string on gun and drug charges, including Shamsu Din Pickens. He qualifies right up there with, with uh, the most, one of the most violent offenders that we've experienced. Listen to how Pickens described himself after an earlier arrest in Sharonville for domestic violence. I don't go to jail for nothing. You hear me? I'm a real live gangster. Ask about me. Real live one. Live wire. Don't go to jail. None of that. Shit. That was before this investigation that sent him to jail on a nine count drug indictment and a million dollar bond. In the video, he talks about touching people, a street term for having people killed. When he talked about uh, he's had people touched, he's not talking about patting them on the head. You see as one of the serve partners. That's where the science comes in, the data that helped build this case. Look at the red dots on the West End map. They represent people shot last year. Now look at the green dots over that. The green represents contact with the defendants. You don't need a PhD in problem solving to figure out exactly where our problem is, exactly who our perpetrators are. Waylon said there are similar investigations going on right now in other neighborhoods. Removing the very small percentage of people engaged in violent activity is liberating to those families uh, and to those neighborhoods. Some could be removed for a very long time. These are the weapons taken in the investigation. If illegally possessed by a convicted felon, it could mean a life sentence. 
if you carry guns illegally in the city of Cincinnati and you are a gang member, you are going to have the full faith and credit of the United States government to remove you from the community and end your terrorist ways. You know, looking at that Pickens video, there was a lot more. We can't uh, let people hear. But he was just so, you know, I'm a thug, nothing happens to me. And then when they arrested him, he had 10 guns pointed at him. Apparently, he was pretty much a wuss. Well, at the when they time, brought him yeah. down. When they brought yeah. him down in this investigation, yeah. It's interesting, too, to see this video because when I think of street gangs, I think of younger people. These right. are men, aren't they? they yeah, this the is not part. your, you know, teenagers naming yeah. themselves after a street corner in a neighborhood. This is a network a business venture, whatever you want to talk it, a criminal network, and they're not from the West End. That's just yeah. where they went to do their, their dirty deeds. Yeah. So we're going to keep track of this because it's a very complicated, interesting uh, investigation and, and successful as well. Deb, thanks very much. Okay. Well, as Deb just mentioned, the top members are not from the West End. It's important to note that's just where they did their business. Yo, yo, we back. It's your boy, Papala. Mob ties. We on our way to Ohio with it. Cincinnati, to be exact. The West End. Over the Rhine. All of that shit. So, anybody from the area, y'all niggas get in the comment box. Let it be known. Y'all niggas tap in at the bottom. Now, the guy that we initially going to be talking about is going to be a guy by the name of Julius White, or primarily be talking about. It's going to be a guy by the name of Julius White. Um, but he also had several associates. One I know by the name of Young Sticks or Lil Sticks. Um, another guy by the name of Sam Shudin Pickens. This real live wire that y'all seen early on in the footage. But we primarily going to be talking about Julius White. Now, a little bit about Julius White. <clears throat> As y'all seen, he been pretty much having run-ins with the law since 2008. Looked like also in 2009. They had some footage with him getting into it, but the reason that ended him up on mob ties is one, because either one, he made the shit so hot that the Cincinnati police department pretty much felt like they had to round up all of the dangerous suspects or two they pretty much used that used him as an excuse to round up people that they probably wanted to round up anyway but that depends on what side of the coin you fall on on what you believe on that so we ain't gonna touch that subject but we're gonna dig a little bit deeper into why um He's on mob ties for real, for real. And anybody, I don't know, man, I'm expecting everybody, man, at least 94% of mob ties had to see the movie Scarface before. So in the movie Scarface, you remember Tony, man, had a saying that he didn't kill women and kids, right? Everybody remember that. So we just going to kind of put a subject out there um, and RIP to Lil Wayne. Shout out to Wayne's World. Shit is wild foul. You can't really tell this mob tie story without saying RIP to a 14-year-old that was killed. Um, I definitely should have said that earlier. Um, but after reading the court paperwork um, and following the trial, I'm going to ask a question, really. So... According to the documents, Julius White was in Paris with his 
girlfriend, a young lady, I'm not even, I'm not even going to say her first name, a young lady by the last name of Isaacs. So he was in Paris. He apparently got a Facebook message from his cousin that an apartment, I guess that she had in his, in her name that he was also using was broken into. Now, when he comes back, um, he finds that apartment broken into, but that's just part of the story because it's like, no matter what they, he was on the radar. And when I say he was on the radar, he was going to be on the radar because he committed the murder of a 14 year old bam. You, that shit going to be hot no matter what. Second, while he was in Paris, I forgot to mention, they put a tracking device on a black infinity that was also in his girlfriend's name that they say he frequently drove. So he gets the Facebook message that the apartment was broken into, da, 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 whatever. He comes back. I guess he check in with his family members. He shoots right back to the apartment complex and he starts to ask about the break in. Starts to ask people about do they know any information? So, guess he don't get the information he wants. So, according to the indictment, he sees the young boy coming off to the coming off the school bus, and according to court documents and the authorities, he apprehends the young boy and murders him. Bam. When I say he was on the radar, y'all remember at the while he was on his trip from the shit that he was doing before the murder even happened or before the robbery even happened, they put the the detector on his car so they kind of at trial they was able to match up his cell phone with the towers and able to match up the GPS tracker they had on the Black Infinity able to match think one of the people that testified against him was one of the people that he asked about the robbery and also last but not least when he was arrested it was it said he told details about his case to somebody and they went in and they pretty much provided details of the murder that they say he provided Anybody that been in, y'all know how that go. They could guess probably your case just to try to shave a few years off his. But if you haven't been, man, y'all go in there, man. Y'all keep your mouth shut. We're going to be back with some more trail 